thanks okay thanks yan van si pi yan yan ay yun ang bias mahesh uh, hello mahesh uh, can you share that uh, uh, code how to reverse words in code. sentence uh, yeah, that's my code yeah, that means i have in my system i don't have right now to ping uh, no just leave it leave it. okay mahesh that's what i said okay possible uh, you know before you close we are having one hour one hour more right so try to get it that if possible so are you write a rough code and give it to our colleagues that will yeah. also fine yeah, okay yeah so when a program try to find yeah sure uh wait a meanwhile can you please uh, write down the steps so that we will get clarity what uh, uh, it will take like, some time okay see i said Okay. You know, it, it will take more time to do that. We have given at least idea. Now, my is given, and I reiterated. So, with that, you try to explore and try to give the give the solution. Okay. Otherwise, we will be end up with the five to ten questions. The already three twenty three. So, twenty minutes we spent, but we covered only three questions. So you got it? Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. got it. So, time is the constraint. Yeah. So, when a program and how to find out the statica dynamic see so i can you yeah. yeah how to find out in a statica dynamic using uh, in cobal program we have a call where okay in the call where if you write the sub program name within a single quotes we can call as a static call if call and variable name is there working so is variable name is there then we can call as a dynamic call okay we can call as a dynamic call so this is the answer for this particular question but i am not sure who has given this question like combination if someone is there if you want to uh, who given this question if you are there please to uh, you know elaborate this question then we can proceed with the we can give this question answer I, yeah so i am checking compiler listing sorry I think checking compiler listing is the right way of doing it. Compiler option, that's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we can see compiler option also. Any other any any other answers before we proceed further? Next question. So, so, I, have, I, have, I have one more question uh, to the static and dynamic. Uh, which one will be the more faster, static or dynamic? Dynamic. Faster, static. Faster, static. Faster, static. Faster, static. static is the faster. And more flexibly oh. dynamic. Oh, dynamic. Static, static is faster because everything is decided which program from which program which program needs to be called everything is decided in the compilation it, it, itself one time there is no need to check if it is a dynamic call so your program doesn't know which program needs to be called it has to check multiple libraries okay hence it will take some time any anyone wants to add on top of this yep. Yeah, Venkata, uh, other thing led to the same, you know, static and dynamic. Uh, in which situation right, we right, use right. the static and in which we use the dynamic? Right, 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 right. Anyone wants to add our on top of our question? Answer? I give him some uh, one answer, what uh, statement. Hi, Venkat Chandra here. I have some uh, uh, In case of dynamic, actually, the subprogram is located somewhere else, right? So we need to bring the subprogram into the memory. So maybe that's why it takes a bit more time. Whereas static, both are together, linked together. As they are located in the same memory, uh, they, they're in first. Okay, thanks. That is also makes sense, correct? Here, Isham here. Uh, like we can tell like in static, both programs are compiled together. So it is just one entity. Uh, when we uh, look into the uh, IMS load, right? It is just compiled together and it is just picking up and running as like one program. In dynamic, called program and calling program are compiled differently and they are locating separately. So if you are uh, doing a dynamic call, right? If you're making any change in the call,
called program you are not going to recompile the calling program so it is like when the running happens the calling program have to take care of where which is the uh, called program and get the corresponding load all that so that itself shows um, a dynamic will be a bit slow but again it is uh, we are easy to work with that we don't need to compile always recompile the calling program and thanks yeah thanks next someone asked me about this question yeah we are done with this question no more discussions on this please <laughs> okay now we are discussing this part someone is about to ask the question i start him please repeat your question when we go for this yeah, i got the i could able to collect when we go for the static call and when we go for, when we go when we go with the dynamic call any two answers quickly which are right We go for dynamic call when the calling programs are more like we have a sub program that will be called from ten or twenty programs. As the maintenance of the as the overhead of maintenance is high, we go for dynamic call because when the sub program is modified, no need to touch the ten or twenty calling programs. So static call is preferred when the like calling program is few and sub programs are more. So the efficiency is more. So no need of no no there is no need of recombining the calling program. Yes, there is another point. Okay, and uh, we go for the dynamic call. Uh, similar line. I am trying to get the answer. When the changes are, uh, you know, you might be doing keep on changes in the multiple programs. Then go with the dynamic uh, call, so that you don't need to touch other modules. Okay, you don't need to recompile compilation and all. But the changes are very less and all in that scenario. You can go with the static call also. One more answer because this is very important question. When you choose a static or dynamic call, this is the scenario based. Okay, by experience will you learn? Any one or two answers on this part? Quickly. Uh, like uh, in dynamic call, uh, separate separate modules is created, and then for the static, uh, only one module is created for the programs. Okay. That, no, no, that is not the question, right? So now, when you will go for the static call, when you go for the dynamic call, that is this question. Oh, okay. Thing is, uh, we'll go for static when we think the program is being called many times. Let's say, like for each record, if if we think the program is called, then we can opt for the static call. The program is calling like like say for like very less times then dynamic call would be the best option but if you feel like uh, the program is being called for each record or let's say maybe very frequent then static call would be the best option and and one more thing is if we think like the sub program is being used by many modules let's say the sub program which we are using if it is being used by more than like 10 so then i think the option would be dynamic one because if if we if we get any changes in the sub program, then we may require to compile all these ten programs, which is like headache. So in that situation also, if you feel the sub program is used by many modules, main modules, then dynamic also would be the best option. Yeah, very good, very good answer. Yeah, any last answer from anyone? So these are you please share your experiences. Okay. Uh, you you okay? I request. Uh, first, you share what to gain in your project. That is very uh, nearest answer for these questions. Okay, right. Now there is a variable x of 25. Some data is there. Okay, move a 11 to b. What is the output or error? So uh, basically, we don't get any error. Point one. Okay. So from 11th position, it will copy on the uh, characters. Okay. But if the text except uh, this particular 25, this is assume that the total characters length is a 20, then it will copy from 11 last five uh, position spaces. Okay, no error will come in this scenario. Uh, uh, okay, so if their question is here 30 characters are there, but the size is except 25, then we will get the compilation error. Okay, I am repeating again. So here we don't get any error because it will copy from 11th position till end of the file. Sorry, end of the variable. 
end of the variable. If you are having less characters in X of 25, also it works fine, but more characters than actual size during compilation, we will get the error. So we are assigning more characters than actual size. Correct me if I'm wrong. Next. Question, how to remove junk values from a file? Anyone can take this question now. If it is in a COBOL program after reading the file, uh, we can, I mean, if we know the field is numeric, then we can have is numeric condition. That is called class condition, okay. Okay. Uh, with I the help of stop. Go ahead, second. Uh, with, with the help of a sort, I, I think we can remove junk values. In the sort control card, sort fields equal to copy, comma, remove CC. So that okay. it will remove the carriage control, junk value. Okay, so you are giving two answers. That will remove is... control characters only, I think. Okay, let's say take a program. Yeah, from program, I will do it, common program. Then we will come to the GCL also. First, let's focus on the cobalt side. Okay. Quickly. Now, let's go to JCL part. How to remove junk values if you're doing using JCL? So, others. I have an answer in JCL. Like, uh, if you know the field is uh, expected to have a value 0 to 9. We can try to filter out the records which are having other than zero to nine, right? right so including right. using include condition or omit condition. Hmm. Yeah. So basically, you are saying that if we know the field, okay. So field wise, we can do it. If there are multiple fields, numeric data type, any field can have the junk value. <laughs> Yeah, like if there are multiple fields, yeah, this solution would work. So you have to write multiple, ka, you know, operate commas. First field, validate it. Do the validate, second field, validate. Third field, validate and remove it. Okay, fine. So last 30 seconds. Do you have any answer for this question? Now we got is another question. Venkat, uh, what is the answer to this? How to remove junk values from a file? See, if we know the field, we can check. That's what our colleague said. If there is a field with a numeric type, we can see uh, the content is zero to nine. Then process, otherwise we can do something else on that. Or if it is a characters, A to B, we'll check it with the field. But if the question is the entire row, then we need to check it the option. We, we, we did not get the answer for that. The entire record, if you want to validate. Field wise, we got partial answer, but row wise, not sure. Yeah, if it is like the entire record is having only numbers, then in the omit count, uh, instead of like uh, giving the positions, we can give entire length and give SS. Yeah, awesome. I got it, but how do you specify junk value? Okay, so omit condition you will give one not, not zero to nine numbers. We can repeat the same line nine times and we can give not equal to a zero, one, two, three or conditions. What about the characters? If there is a yeah, character data, this will work only if entire record is uh, uh, like numbers. Uh, first thing, Venkat, uh, we have to we have to define what is junk value. So depending on the requirements, uh, like numeric, alphanumeric, everything will be valid. So first thing for our uh, requirement, we should define what exactly is uh, junk value. So based on that, we can go ahead and remove them. So in the program, right? So other than uh, numeric and alphanumeric, anything else like low, we can check for low values and high values. Then we can uh, have a check and remove them, right? I mean, it, it, it again depends on our uh, condition. Yeah, very good. 
So team, I know we did not get the conclusion because the question is, so we got the multiple answers because we don't know the context, right? The who asked the question, I don't know the question is there here or not. So if it is a numeric, there is answer call. We have a omit condition. Okay. Sort this is someone said. You can try on all those things. Okay, let me go to the next question. If in a pro two program cursor has opened it simultaneously, what will happen? This generally we don't try to do this. Any other ans any answers? So you mean both cursors are using same table? Uh, yes, because that is the yeah. If the different tables, then there is no question also, right? Assuming that yeah, one if it, table, which, yeah. If it is only one table and depending on isolation level, uh, I mean, we, it will be a call. Like if it is <clears throat> correct, I agree. Depending any on isolation answers? level. Yeah. Any other answers? Right. Let me add my answer here. So team, okay. Question is if there are two cursors are in one cursor in one program, second cursor in second program. Each cursor is processing different tables. There is no need of asking this question because there is no conflicting or deadlock chance here, right? So, but same table is using by two programs, and in two programs they are implemented cursor concept. So as our colleagues said, Ravasuras, okay. So if you are having, when well, no, it depends on isolation level parameter, how you are going to apply the lock. You are going to apply the lock on the table or page row wise. If you are going with the row wise, then when both programs are eating the same row, then we will get deadlock error. Otherwise, it is going to work smoothly. Okay. So hence, answer for this question. You are good to process same table. You can access same table data from multiple programs simultaneously. There is no problem at all. But conditions apply. When two programs are hitting the same data where it is locked by another program, that time we will get the deadlock error. Otherwise, it is going to work smoothly. This is my answer here. Anyone wants to add or correct? 